Hi y'all. Today I have a book review for you and it is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. Let's see if I can, can you see that? This is a book I got from my library. I tried for a while to get it from my library and uh, they were hiding it in the YA section because in my library where I'm at Anything classified as fantasy is automatically YA, something I forgot. Uh, this is a book I found through BookTube, uh, through other reviewers that I follow, and from what they were saying, I thought it might be something I would enjoy, and oh gosh, was it. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this book. Uh, when I was younger, I tried fantasy, or at least I thought I tried fantasy, and I didn't think it was for me. It's only in about, it's only about the last two years where I've developed a taste for fantasy. Um, I'm, I even wrote one, huh. um, but I've come to learn what I like in a fantasy and what I don't like in a fantasy. One thing I do not like in my fantasies is grimdark, and this is a very popular way to write fantasy right now, so many of the series out there are, they're grimdark, they're just gritty and unpleasant, and none of the characters ever seem to be happy, and I read for escapism. I read for fantasy fulfillment, I read for entertainment, and I don't like to be depressed all the time. And when I say it's not grimdark, uh, what I mean is that, just like in Harry Potter, he was an orphan, his parents died horribly, there was very clear child abuse going on, and that did influence who Harry was as a character, but it didn't set the entire tone of the movies or the books in the way that most grimdarks would. I'm not a fan of grimdark. When it works in the world, I'm, I'm usually fine uh, with some elements of gore. Friends of the, the Walking Dead series, I really liked that show up until about the third or fourth season where it felt like it was just getting gory for gore's sake. Um, and I, I stopped watching after that. It does deal with some dark issues and it does have some particularly dark scenes in it, but the overall tone of the book is pretty lighthearted. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's not depressing. Um, so often when I find something in fantasy that isn't grimdark, it's almost like it's trying purposefully not to be grimdark and it ends up going the other way. <laughs> sometimes very far away. In the distance, hear the laughter of the last unicorn. I'm alive. I'm alive. Locke Lamore is a happy guy, and he loves life, and he loves his job, and he loves his crew and he's a lot of fun to spend time with and he's once you get away from the stealing bit he's actually not a bad dude the book follows Locke Lamora Locke Lamora is an orphan and he is saved from a larger slave trade by a man called the thief maker who is a man who trains young orphans to to be thieves just common thieves pit po pickpockets that sort of thing all right, you ready? Yep. Let me go home. Let me go home. Let me walk out that door. Let me go home. Let me Let me go home. Let me walk out that door. Well, I'm feeling so fine, but I just can't. Lock Lamora has a talent for thievery and for uh, getting into mischief and sometimes a lot of times getting in over his head with it and just for shenanigans in general. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all really. Evil shenanigans. And it is set in it has a very 1850s, early 1900s high society feel to it, 
there's actually not a lot of a magic system until you're about halfway through the book. So it's, it's kind of easy to forget that reading a fantasy, which I really liked at first because it was so it was so character driven and it was just so entertaining, the inner dynamics of not only Locke's personal relationships with his gang and with the people around him, but the larger politics of the city. This whole book occurs in just one city, so um, there's actually a map of it. Can you see that? Right, so the whole city is in just, just on that map, and there are different sections of the city. Each part of the city has its own feel, just like you know, in other fantasy series you would have these entire worlds with all these different cities or all these different planets. But it's all just in one city, which I liked. It was a lot easier to keep track of, especially for... This is my first time reading Scott Lynch, so I don't know his style yet. He's a true anti-hero but not a villain. And the difference there is that an anti-hero has a moral code that he follows, which does come up throughout the book. He, there are certain lines he won't cross, and um, his thievery he sees more as a job than as something he just enjoys doing, although he does like to be good at his job. I am an exceptional thief. But he legitimately sees it as a career. The city is not on Earth, and the way we know that is we get these little tiny architectural details um, through just just mentioned throughout the book that uh, come into play later in a very satisfying way. The city was originally built by another species and then later colonized by humans. Uh, we don't know exactly how that happened. The majority of the story uh, follows Locke and his gang and the shenanigans that they get into and their very complicated heists and there's a lot of snarky dialogue uh, there's a lot of dry humor a lot of sarcasm this was right up my alley i loved this book i loved every minute of this book and especially for a debut the i wouldn't call it an unreliable narrator but the text does play with the reader in just a fun way. You'll think one thing's going on and then you'll have the rug pulled out up from under you and something else is going on and it was a lot of fun and it was very much in the personality of Locke Lamora and I enjoyed that part of the book very much. There are a lot of comparisons to Ocean's Eleven with this book. I would compare it to a different George Clooney movie but it's fair enough. Um, the crew is not as big. The crew is only five guys. You've got uh, Locke Lamora, who is the brains of the operation. He's not very good at fighting, uh, but he's very clever. He does have very good instincts, and he is a master of disguise. Um, and he's the one who plans all of their heists, and he's the one who figures out how they're going to do it. Next is the twins, and they're good all-around guys, they fill out different roles as needed. They're pretty good at most things. After that, there's Gene, who is the fighter. He's the muscle of the group. He's the one who has the most experience in fighting. He was sent to special classes on how to use particular weapons and become masters in them. He's the muscle. Then there's Bug, who is the newest recruit. Um, he's not still more of an initiate. He's not a full gentleman bastard yet, so he's often the diversion. He's the lookout. Um, he's very precocious. There's a religion in this book. Um, not so much gods, but more of a saint sort of situation. There are 12 main churches. Each one has priests that uh, pay tribute to a certain saint. I don't know if there's another word um, that I've forgotten, but it's basically a saint. And Locke and his gang pretend to be priests of a 13th church whose uh, saint is, um, what is it called, the patron of thieves. And that plays into how he believes that it's an actual legitimate career choice. There are several timelines in this book. We follow Locke as a child, as he's getting his start right after um, he was picked up by the thief maker. Uh, we, we see him being sold 
to uh, Chains. Uh, there, there's a very clear slave market in this book. But he's sent into the care of Chains, who teaches him how to be a gentleman bastard. Um, the twins are already there when uh, Locke gets there, but Chains is the one who educates these boys, who teaches them how to blend in with high society, how to blend in with the different religious uh, factions of this world, and how to how to be comfortable in any sort of situation they might find themselves in where they could easily pass and no one around them would know that they're talking with a, a thief. They learn languages, they read books, they learn music, they learn everything they could possibly need. These are some remarkably well-educated <laughs> individuals who then put all of their effort into thievery. But it's fun. It's shenanigans. No, it's, it's fun. The magic system is a little subtle. Not many people in this world use magic. It's the exception, not the rule. The only people who use uh, magic well in this book are the Bonds Mages. And they are kind of a secret society that puts themselves out for hire at exorbitant prices. So you almost never see one in their world. They're very rare individuals. For the first half of the book, it's easy to forget that you're reading a fantasy because the magic only pops up in these, these little tiny ways that almost don't matter. You know, okay, this particular coin was enchanted in some way. Probably my favorite part of the book were these little architectural details that ran throughout that explained that this this wasn't something occurring on Earth. This was an alien planet later colonized by humans. Now we don't know how that happens, but hopefully later in later books that'll come up. The materials they used were very intriguing to me. I would say the only thing I really didn't enjoy in this book were there were entire chapters that felt extraneous to me. Um, they were all very short, just two to four pages each. There were probably a dozen or more in here. And they all had their own little storyline following their own little characters. And they all wrapped up at the end, um, at the end of each chapter. But I kept expecting them to be more than just world building. I expected them all to kind of come together somehow in a way that affected the larger plot. Uh, that never happened and it just felt a little odd to me in such an other, otherwise well-crafted book. Now, I did enjoy them. They all had their own little payoff. Most of them were quite funny, uh, but eh, it, it just felt a little odd to me, and that would be its one negative that I would give it. I gave this book five stars, and I highly recommend it. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I can't wait for the next book. Um, I'll be checking the YA section of my library for this very, very, very adult high fantasy. That's all from me in this video. If you've read The Lives of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Um, if you haven't read it, tell me if you're interested in reading it now. Um, I would love to hear from you. So until then, bye. Beep, beep, beep. And just the general, am I blocking my light? No, I'm not good. Crap. See, I wrote it down and I didn't bring it in with me. <sighs> Babies are crying because they don't want to nap. But if they don't nap, they're going to cry even more.